We've seen that carbonyl compounds are electrophilic. So now let's focus on what they react with nucleophiles. The very generic reaction looks like this. The homo of a nucleophile adds to the lumo of a carbonyl compound, CO pi star, which is largest on carbon. This breaks the pi bond and the electrons go on to oxygen. The product of this step has a new sp3 carbon and should look familiar to you. We called it a tetrahedral intermediate in Chem 202. The first type of nucleophiles we'll deal with are strong nucleophiles that add irreversibly to carbonyl compounds. By strong, we mean that they have very high energy homos and are therefore very powerful donors of electrons. And by irreversible, we mean that the equilibrium constant for the reaction is very, very large. The types of nucleophiles that fall into this category are those that have negative charge on not very electronegative atoms, especially hydrogen or carbon. We call these compounds the hydride ion and carbanions. The trouble with the species that I've drawn, H- and C-, is that they're quite challenging to make, and when they are made, they usually behave as Bronsted bases rather than nucleophiles. That is, they don't really do the reaction that we described a second ago. But we chemists are resourceful. For many years, chemists knew about the compound lithium aluminum hydride, LiAlH4, which does act sort of like a nucleophilic H-. For instance, it reacts with butanone in rigorously anhydrous diethyl ether as the solvent to make butoxide. We'll show the precise mechanism in just a moment. But it also tends to spontaneously burst into flame and explodes when it comes in contact with water. So it's not ideal. So in 1940, two clever chemists, Hermann Schlesinger and Herbert C. Brown, discovered a more tame hydride source called sodium borohydride, NaBH4, which also reacts with ketones and aldehydes like lithium aluminum hydride, but can be safely stored in a bottle on a shelf and can be used in protic solvents, typically alcohols. So how do these two reagents work? The anions aluminum hydride and borohydride both have similar Lewis structures, a central atom with four hydrogens and a negative formal charge on the central atom. They both act as nucleophiles, so we're interested in their homos. In both cases, they are sigma bonding orbitals either sigma ALH or sigma BH. When they react with a carbonyl group, it's the bonding pair of electrons that is donated into CO pi star. Now this is a little bit of a weird situation. Where do the electrons end up? Whenever a bonding pair of electrons is donated, a bond is removed from the less electronegative atom and the electrons go with the more electronegative atom toward their destination orbital. Here, the electrons carry the hydrogen atom along with it as they donate into the LUMO of the carbonyl group, and we make a new carbon-hydrogen bond. We now have an alkoxide, which we can turn into an alcohol quite easily by providing it with a weak acid. In the case of lithium aluminum hydride, we need to do this in a second step we call a workup. But with borohydride, the alcohol or water we use as the solvent can serve this role. So we now have a safe, effective way to convert ketones and aldehydes to alcohols using either of our two hydride reagents. But what if we want a new carbon-carbon bond at the carbonyl carbon? The type of reagent we use for this reaction is called a Grignard reagent, after Victor Grignard, a French chemist who was instrumental in the development of chemical warfare agents in World War I. He first described these reagents in 1901, and they have the general formula RMGX, where R is a hydrocarbon and X is a halogen. 
They have a carbon-magnesium sigma bond. Since carbon is much more electronegative than magnesium, this bond is very polar, with the carbon bearing most of the negative charge. The HOMO of these Grignard reagents, as they're called, is sigma MGC. It's an excellent donor orbital and reacts with carbonyl groups like this. When sigma MGC attacks CO pi star, we make a new carbon-carbon bond and push electrons up onto the oxygen. Again, we have an alkoxide, which we can turn into a neutral alcohol by adding a weak acid in a workup step.